Feminism. Has it worked for us? Are more women happier today with their lives? Have things gotten better since the women's liberation movement? Doesn't seem that way. There's a saying in Spanish that goes, pagamos juntas por pecadoras. We beg together as sinners. I might not agree with most of the women who led the women's lift movement. I might not desire any of their impositions on society. But now, I have to live with them. Why did I decide to talk about this? It's been on my mind for a while, ever since the War with Nature video I made. We pay together sinners in a variety of ways. Many women making consistently bad choices with their voting patterns based on their feelings and compassion rather than logic. That makes people believe that it is women who are emotional wrecks when it comes to voting. And in many ways, they, or should I say we, are. Not all of us are. But if information was being given fairly and properly, perhaps women wouldn't vote against their own interests and the interests of their nations and people. But again, we pay together as sinners. I wish that wasn't the case, but here we are. Now there's something to be said about male leadership. And if maybe this could all be turned around if masculinity had not been so viciously attacked and so many men hadn't been feminized in our culture. If so many men hadn't been made to feel angry at women. But that's a whole other conversation and that would require a different video. Nowadays, a lot of women, unfortunately, fall victim to the propaganda. Sexually showcasing yourself on the internet for all to see means empowered. Slaving away in a company cubicle for hours instead of at home with your family means independence. Casual sex with different men also means empowered and in charge of your body. Women today are more depressed than ever before. But aren't we more free than ever before? More free than ever before in education, business, politics. Yet, where did it get us? Pro-abortion laws? Yes. So you can be more sexually empowered and share yourself with more men. Again, we pay together as sinners. Why would a man commit to a woman if he knows he can get sexual favors in any bar in town? Women took away the incentive for a man to thoughtfully pursue a woman. Only the few men who were raised with high standards will decide to opt out of the degenerate hedonistic agenda of our current culture. Which some might argue is a good thing, but why would you want to set the lowest possible standards for men to be with women? Why would you incentivize bad behavior? Some men will be laughing with that colossal mistake feminists made that allows for men to take more sexual advantages of women. But at the end of the day, we both pay the price. But this video is me calling out women. Men complain that women don't do it enough, which I disagree with. Because the voices that are championed by the media and the culture are those who push against us, who push the feminist agenda. Many women will be raised with the slogan, you don't need a man. And then wonder when they're old and frail, why they're so alone. For all the success women have had, a lot of us have let go or squashed our inner voices and nature and forgot how to be women. Women will try to compete with men, to rival them, and then end up burning themselves out in workplaces because they're in their masculine energy all day and then complain that stress levels are higher in women. I wonder why. Women, stop. Stop competing with men. They're not your enemy. Try to compliment them. We are the yin to their yang. Suzanne Venker, 
An author and podcaster speaking against feminism today says, quote, but all progress comes with a price. And that is certainly the case here. For in the midst of all their hard earned success, women forgot how to do something that used to come naturally. They forgot how to love a man. She goes on, quote, Gone is a soft, feminine creature who creates a masculinity, and in her place is the hardened woman who prides herself on her fierce independence. She's convinced she doesn't need a soul, least of all a man, and she's proud of it. What do we have, though? Obviously, women still want a man, and men still want a woman. Online dating is a $2 billion industry. Matchmakers are struggling to match high-earning women because women seem to be pickier than men. Why? Because a lot of women, they don't understand their own value. And they think that because they have a higher degree and higher education or high earners, that they should get a high-value man. But that's not what men are looking for. Those are not the qualifications that men are looking for. That's what women are looking for. And then when women do get married, they're the ones that are most likely to ask for a divorce. Because many of them get married for the wedding celebration, not the marriage that comes afterwards. 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And no, it's not because all those men are trash. I personally know of family friends whose wife divorced them because they were bored. That is not a reason to get divorced. In sickness or in health, right? When you make the marriage vows, you agree to be with that person for life, not until you get bored. I get that men are frustrated, but this does not mean I appreciate the hate a lot of male content creators send our way. A lot of us are trapped in the culture and many will not get out, ever. Men. Use your discernment to pick a woman. A lot of us have to do work to do a lot of unlearning of the indoctrination we endured. But I get the frustration. Women, in general, choose men with a good relationship with their mother. Same advice for men on women's relationship with their father. These things matter even if they're becoming less common in our world. I'm here calling out women because this feminist, women's liberation, work and hustle until you're dead thing is not working out. And us women, it's time to reconnect with who we are and stop trying to compete with our men. Cheers. Cheers.